Hello AP Chemistry students, it's me Dr. V and it's time to do some review for the AP Chemistry exam which is coming up really soon for my students. We all want to be prepared for that big exam. In this webcast we're going to work through free response question number five from the 2018 exam. Now if you've worked through some AP Chem exams before you know that the short free response questions are scored out of four points. Typically that's three or four parts to earn those four points. If you don't already have your calculator and your periodic table and your AP Chemistry formula sheet, pause the video, go get them and come back. You need to have them at your fingertips when you're working through free response questions. My other recommendation, and I always say this, as I show you each part of the question, try to come up with your own answer first. Pause the video, work through it, come up with an answer, and then listen to my explanation. And then keep track of your score as you go. That's a really important part trying to work it out yourself and then listen to the explanation that helps you get better as a student, it helps you write more thorough detailed answers, it helps you to earn more points as you're showing your knowledge of chemistry. So let's jump right in. The ionization of HF in water, hydrofluoric acid, is represented by the equation above. HF plus H2O is in equilibrium with fluoride ion and hydronium ion. And we're told in a 0 0.0350 molar HF solution, the percent ionization of HF is 13 percent. Clearly this is an acid-base problem. Here's the actual first question. Two particulate representations of the ionization of HF molecules in this 0 0.0350 molar solution are shown below in figures one and two. Oh, let, let's look at those. Figure one, figure two. Why is figure one a more accurate representation of what's going on in these solutions compared to figure two? Well, we're actually given a lot of information here. First, we're told that the percent ionization of HF in these solutions is 13%. If you don't already know this, HF is a weak acid. Hopefully you memorized your list of strong acids, but HF is a weak acid, and that means only a few of the HF molecules are going to dissociate. In many weak acid solutions, it's less than 5%. In this particular example, it's 13%, but it's still, you know, 13 out of every 100. And these two figures are meant to be the same molarity. So let's look at figure one what's going on in there, what's represented on the particle level. I see seven HF molecules, I see one hydronium ion, I see one fluoride ion. The vast majority of the molecules are still HF molecules, and I only have one out of the total of eight that's dissociated. One out of a total of eight, that's about 13 percent, and that's what we said the solution had in terms of percent dissociation. If we look at figure two, I see eight hydronium ions, I see eight fluoride ions. I don't see any HF molecules. Every single HF molecule that was present has dissociated into ions. That looks more like a strong acid to me, 100% dissociation. Therefore, we can say figure one is a better representation of the weak acid because it's mostly HF molecules. It's showing 13% dissociation, whereas figure two is showing 100% dissociation. All of the HF molecules have dissociated. Now, in order to earn the point here, you either needed to describe what was right about figure one or what was wrong with figure two. You didn't have to do both. I went a little overboard, right? I did a little extra. It's okay. But do remember, you want to keep your answers brief. So don't go into lots of detail when you don't need to. So that was just part A. Let's go look at part B. Use the percent ionization data above to calculate the value of Ka for HF. This is a classic problem type. You absolutely need to be able to do this, folks. Let's think about our strategy for solving this problem. First, we're going to need a Ka expression. We've got the balanced equation. It's asking about an equilibrium constant. We need that equilibrium constant expression. And we're going to also need an ice table. That's the preferred strategy for figuring out the values of the equilibrium concentrations so that we can substitute them into our Ka expression. You know, when in doubt, if you're given an equilibrium, write a KEQ expression. So here's our KA expression, <coughs> products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, just like we always write for KEQ expressions. And there's even a sample KA expression on your formula sheet. But since we know what all the formulas are, we're going to put those in. And now let's think about our ice table. The species are HF and F minus and H3O plus. We're not going to worry about the liquid water. And we are given the initial concentration of the HF is 0 0.0350 molar. We're going to assume that the fluoride ion concentration initially is zero. Pure water wouldn't have any. And we're going to ignore any H3O plus that's in pure water and just work with zero from that. 
And now we need to think about how this system will move or shift in order to establish equilibrium. It's got to proceed in the forward direction. I need to use up some of my reactants and make products. So the concentration of HF needs to go down. The concentrations of fluoride and hydronium ions both need to go up all by the same amount. I'm just going to call it X. And so in terms of X, we could say that the equilibrium concentration of HF is 0.035 minus X and fluoride is X and H3O plus is X at equilibrium. Uh, but there is a little catch to this problem. Uh, our next step that we need to do is calculate the hydronium ion concentration. We know that X is 13% of the initial HF concentration. We're told that the percent ionization of HF is 13%. And so we need to calculate that 13% of 0 0.0350, and that comes out to be 0 0.00455. Fine, so we know what X is. And here's where the tricky part comes in. We cannot ignore X for HF because we know that it is more than 5%. In so many of these problems where we know Ka, we know that the value of X is small and we ignore it for that initial acid concentration. We cannot do it in this problem because it's greater than 5%. Right? And this is the number one mistake students made on this problem. In fact, I made this mistake my first time working through this problem because we get so used to ignoring X for the weak acid. We can't hear. Taking that into account, we know X is 0 0.00455, so we have to subtract that from the initial concentration of HF. And so our equilibrium concentration of HF is 0 0.03045 molar. The fluoride ion concentration is equal to X. The hydronium ion concentration is equal to X. And so now we have all the parts that we need. Now we can substitute these values into our Ka expression, and then we just have to substitute and evaluate. We get an answer of 6.80 times 10 to the minus fourth for our K, which is consistent with what we know for HF. It is a weak acid, it's a small Ka value. Now this question was scored out of two points. There was one point for calculating the hydronium ion concentration, and the second point was for correctly getting to the Ka value. But if you did not remember to include the value of X and incorporate that into the equilibrium concentration for HF, you would not have earned the second point. Now there's one more part to this problem. If 50 mils of distilled water is added to 50 mils of the 0 0.0350 molar HF, will the percent ionization of HF increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer with an explanation or calculation. This part was kind of tricky. In general, Weak acids have a higher percent dissociation as the concentration decreases. If you dilute your sample, the percent ionization increases because we need to maintain this equilibrium, right? We need to get back to the ratio determined by the Ka value. But writing it down like this is a little squishy. How could we back this up in a more general way? It really becomes a Q versus K argument. That's really the best way to answer this question. So here's what I did. I know my Ka expression, we wrote it down on the previous screen, I know the value for Ka. So we had 50 mils of the solution and we added 50 mils of water. We just doubled the volume of the mixture. And that means all the concentrations have halved. And now we have to reestablish equilibrium. The best way to handle those problems is always Q versus K. So this is a little broader strategy. I can say that my hydronium ion concentration is half of what it was. Fluoride ion concentration is half of what it was. The HF concentration is half of what it was. Two of the 0.5s basically cancel out. In other words, Q is half of the Ka value that I found on the previous slide. If I wanted to actually do the math out, I get Q is equal to 3.40 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now this is smaller than the equilibrium constant. And we know when, the, when Q, the reaction quotient, is smaller than the equilibrium constant, what that means is I have too many reactants and not enough products. And therefore, I need to proceed in the forward direction in order to reestablish equilibrium. I need to make more products. And the products are ions. Therefore, the percent ionization is going to go up because I have to shift right to make more hydronium ion and make more fluoride ion. My percent ionization increases, and that's what I needed to say really to earn this point. Kind of a long, convoluted approach but it works and it's correct, and I can earn the full point here. Just to get a sense of how you're doing on this problem, the average score on this question in 2018 
was 1.32 out of 4. So if you earn 2 or 3 or even woo, 4 points, you're doing just fine. If you got 4 points on this question, kudos to you. Keep practicing. Subscribe to my channel to get all my latest videos. And do chemistry every day. That AP chemistry exam is coming up. And if you are prepared, you can do well.